Hi, boys and girls. How are you today? Well, we're in Mrs. Becker's kitchen, and today we're going to be doing some baking, and we'll do a little science with the baking, and we also have to be able to read some words from a recipe and look at numbers. So there are lots of different things we are going to use when we do our little baking activity today. Now, I wanted to show you a picture from the Bible. Who is this man? That's right, this is John. You remember he was nicknamed John the Baptist because he baptized people who believed in Jesus and who wanted to be part of God's family. And they also wanted to stop doing what kind of things? Bad things, that's right. And they wanted to start doing what kind of things? Good things, that's right. Now, do you remember where John the Baptist lived? Where did he live? Remember? Lived in a desert, that's right. And what did he eat? Do you remember that? Grasshoppers and honey. Well, guess what? The baking project that we have today will let us make grasshoppers and honey snacks. Does that sound good? We really aren't going to use grasshoppers. That's a relief, but we'll use honey. And we are going to make these snacks. And maybe you can make these at home sometime too. All right, so Mrs. Becker had to look at the recipe to see what she needed to have. And first of all, we needed some crescent rolls. Now I've already opened the crescent rolls, but they come in a container that's covered with this. They kind of look like this, and you might have seen them before, okay? So we need crescent rolls. Then we needed some pretzel sticks. So I have some pretzel sticks here. We're going to need some cinnamon. So I brought my cinnamon here. We need a little bit of butter, which Mrs. Becker already put in this cup. We're going to need a little bit of honey. And look at Mrs. Becker's honey container. Can you tell what shape it's in? It's in the shape of a bear. Did you know bears like honey? I know. All right, and then we need a little bit of sugar. And this is Mrs. Becker's big sugar container. And then we need some raisins. And I already have the raisins here. And I'm gonna sneak some chocolate chips sometime in here too, since I happen to have those. All right, and now we're going to put this all together. So the first thing I have to do is open my crescent roll. So I already kind of cracked the tube open. Oh, you know what? The very first thing, I've done this already, but I'm gonna do it again. The very first thing I need to do, wash my hands. All right, so let me start to do that. I'm gonna wash them again. I washed them before. I got this all set up. You hear the water? Wash, wash, wash. Okay, now I'll dry my hands. It's always important when we're working with food to wash our hands, isn't it? All right, so now I washed my hands. Now I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to try to carefully take the crescent rolls out. And the recipe says to try to keep them together. We'll see if I can do it. Oh my goodness, it's working. Usually it doesn't work that nice. All right, so I've got all the dough on my tray. Do you see what shape that is? It's got two long sides and two short sides. Oh, it's a rectangle. Okay, so we did that and that even worked perfect. Okay, next, let's see what it says to do. Oh, I better look at all of this. Oh, then I'm supposed to take the butter and put it in my microwave for a little bit. What do you think will happen when I put the butter into my microwave? That's a little science. Okay, let's see. I'll put it in here just for a few seconds. What do you think is going to happen to my butter? Hmm. Hmm. What is a microwave hot or cold? Oh, that's right, it's hot. What do you think is going to happen to the butter? Well, we're going to find out. Just a second. Oh, you know what? It could go a little longer. We'll go a little longer. Oh, my. Now, if you do this at home, you're going to need some help, aren't you? With, from a grown-up. Okay. Oh, perfect. Okay, so what happened? I know, it melted. All right, then 
the next thing the directions say is to put some cinnamon in the butter mixture, okay? And I have my cinnamon here, and I think my tablespoon is over here. Yes, it is. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of cinnamon in my tablespoon. I'm just shaking it in here. Can you tell I'm shaking it? And hopefully it'll come out. Goodness. There we go. Kind of, you know what you have to do? You have to go a little bit back and forth here. Ooh, how does cinnamon smell? Did some of you smell the cinnamon this past week when we were talking about our senses? Some of you may have done that. All right. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna dump it in here. Okay. And I have something called a pastry brush. And I'm gonna kind of swirl it around and oh, what happened to the color? I know, now it's brown. And then I'm supposed to take the pastry brush and just put the butter and the cinnamon on the dough and just brush it around. We may not even need all of this. We'll see. Oh my goodness, it was yellow. And then when I put the cinnamon in, which by the way is kind of brown, the whole mixture turned brown. Oh my, and you know what? It smells nice and sweet. Do you think the snack will taste sweet then too? Mm. Okay, so now I did that. Do you see that? Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, now I have to go back to the directions because this is the first time Mrs. Becker has done this recipe before, okay? So the next thing we're supposed to do is take a few of the raisins and throw them on here too, okay? And separate them a little bit. So we'll throw a few on. And then we're going to save the raisins, some of the raisins, for something else, too. So we'll just throw them on so we get a few raisins on each piece here. Oh, I can probably throw a few more. This piece doesn't have many. And remember, I've already washed my hands, so this is all good. Okay, and now let's put a few of the chocolate chips on, too. Raisins and chocolate chips, does that sound good? Well, I think it sounds pretty good. This would be like a kind of a dessert snack, wouldn't it? All right, just a few more. Oh my goodness. Okay, now I have that done. All right, and then, oh, this is probably going to be a kind of a sweet snack, but it says the sprinkles from the sugar too. I'm just taking this spoon. Do you see how I sprinkle? Sprinkle this on the whole rectangle. Just a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good, I think. All right, so I did all that. And now I have to turn this over because that's all that's on that one. And now I have to take these and the cinnamon or the dough has little lines in it. And I might get a knife out to help me with these lines, but if I cut along the lines, you're gonna see what shape I have. I'll show you in just a second, okay? So there's one. One here. There should be, I think, eight by the time I'm done, okay? I'll show you all of this one. Finish it up. Okay, there's four on that side, and I have to do the four on this side. This side's trickier because it's harder to see the lines. Oh, now I see them. Sometimes they're easy to see, and sometimes not so much. All right. Okay, so here's one piece out here. Do you know what? 
it's in the shape of a triangle and it kind of looks like a piece of pizza. All right, now I'm supposed to roll it up. Now let me do it this way. Move my camera a little bit so you can see. I'm gonna start at the big end and roll. I rolled it all the way up so it looks like this, okay? And I'm gonna start at the big end and roll. Okay. Start at the big end, roll, and another big end here, and roll. Well, that's pretty easy, isn't it? Okay, over here, big end, guess what? Roll. Take that apart. Okay. And then the big end over on this one. We'll count when I'm done, okay? Let's see what we've got. I told you there's a lot of math. Roll from the big end. And I have one more to do. Okay. All right. Let me turn it this way. I move this. Okay. I'm going to move my knife out of the way. Okay, so how do you see what they look like? Oh my goodness. Okay. Now let's see what it tells me to do. All right, so now I have them rolled up. I am supposed to use raisins to make eyes. So I'm just going to take, should we give our our uh, grasshopper two eyes because that's what a grasshopper would have, right? There, you see the two eyes on that one? I'm gonna put them on one end here. Doesn't matter which end. Yeah, whatever end I put them on, that's gonna be the head, right? So you just decide which one works best for you. Oh my goodness, my grasshoppers are taking shape. Two eyes, that's two raisins on each one, okay? And I need one more pair of eyes. Do you see all the eyes on my grasshoppers? Oh, I know. Okay, next, this is where the pretzel sticks come into play. All right, I need to get some pretzel sticks and I need to get my grasshopper some legs. Do you know that a grasshopper has six legs? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these in half. You see that? And you know what? If you don't break it exactly in half, it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to stick it in the sides of each grasshopper. Oh, and we'll do some counting. I forgot to count before. And that's because I'm trying to get all these legs in. Oh my goodness. This is going to be a yummy snack when we get to eat it. Well, Mrs. Becker will have Mr. Becker help me eat them, okay? And as I said, maybe you can make them at home and then you can find out how it tastes. Okay, getting there. Put them on my tray. Let's see what I'm gonna do all of my grasshoppers to have two, or excuse me, six legs, not two. Silly Mrs. Becker. I think I'm going to move my grasshoppers a little bit. There's one. Another one. Okay. That way they have room for their legs. I know that sounds silly, doesn't it? You know what? I have some small sticks in this one anyway. So I don't have to break some of them. All right. There's another one. All good to go. Boy, I've never done this before. It's kind of fun, I'll tell you that. And it is very easy. So I know you guys could do it too. All right. Okay, I have two there. I'm gonna break this one. Two there. Oh, these are ready to go already. Perfect. All right. Turn this grasshopper around this way. 
Then I'll turn this on while I'm at it. Okay, still need to make sure these guys have their six legs. Almost there. One grasshopper to go. Do you know another name for grasshoppers is locusts? Locusts. And that's another word that you would see in the Bible if you were reading the story about John. Okay, let me show you what this looks like. Get these pencils out of the way and then you can see. Do you see the grasshoppers? Oh, isn't that fun? They sure do look like desert bugs, don't they? The last thing the recipe has me do is take some honey and drizzle it over. So I can just take the honey and drizzle it. Just put a little bit, okay? I'm making a line on the top of the grasshopper, okay? Yum. And then we're going to do some counting, okay? I know I keep saying that, but I hope I don't forget. Yum, yum, yum. How many of you like honey? Oh, believe me, everything smells good. If you do this at home sometime, you'll see that. All right. So now, look at the grasshoppers, and they're covered in honey. Yum. We have honey and um, grasshopper snacks here, don't we? All right. Now it says that I'm supposed to put this in my oven. And I already set my oven at 375 degrees. And these are going to be in there for 9 to 12 minutes. Okay. So let me put them in. Oh, before I do that, I almost forgot about the counting. We need to count how many grasshoppers we have. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And every grasshopper has two eyes and every grasshopper has six legs. Okay. All right. And then I will set my timer. And I'm going to go about 11 minutes and hope that works out well. All right, so while we're waiting, I'm going to put the uh, film, the video, on pause and then when my timer goes off I'll come back and we'll start taping again okay all right hi boys and girls I'm back and our grasshoppers and honey have come out of the oven and I think what I'll do is I'll move my camera so you can see everything a little more closely See them? They're nice and golden and brown. Oh, they look like they might be good to eat. Oh, they could be. I had to use hot pads when I took them out of the oven because, of course, the tray is very, very hot. So these are my hot pads, right? And I'm letting them cool off a little bit, but I thought I'd take one off the tray and put it on the plate so you could see it a little bit better. And again, I've already washed my hands. Now I did find that my raisin eyes wanted to come off, but I can put it back on. Oh my goodness. And you know what you can do now? You can eat this, but before you eat it, you could put some butter on it or you could put a little bit more honey and then you could eat your very own grasshopper snack. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh my goodness. And I was thinking, We've been learning a song about John the Baptist. And we know that John the Baptist wore what? I know he wore camel's hair. And where did he live? In the desert. And what did he eat? Grasshoppers and honey. So we could sing the song by going, John the Baptist, John the Baptist, lived in the desert, lived in the desert. He told about Jesus. He told about Jesus everywhere, everywhere. John the Baptist, John the Baptist, wore a camel's clothes, wore a camel's clothes. He told about Jesus, he told about Jesus everywhere, everywhere. John the Baptist, John the Baptist, ate grasshoppers and honey. 
ate grasshoppers and honey. He told about Jesus. He told about Jesus everywhere, everywhere. All right, boys and girls, thanks for watching me do the baking, and I hope you get a chance to do this recipe at home. Bye-bye.